Hey guys, my name is Dave from Guitar Zero to Hero and in this video I'll be teaching you how to master your guitar fretboard. So first off, I just want to clarify one thing, which is that there's a big difference between knowing the fretboard and internalizing the fretboard. When you know the fretboard, that means if someone asked you what the note on the seventh fret of the G string was, you'd be able to figure it out. When you've internalized the fretboard, if someone asked you the exact same question, you wouldn't even hesitate and you could give them that answer as well as the numerous other positions on the neck that you could play that exact same note. It's fully internalized and it's second nature. Think about how you type on a keyboard. Most tech savvy people could type a sentence without even looking. That's internalized. But that doesn't mean that if you can't touch type that you can't write a sentence. It would just take you a little bit longer. As a guitarist, I think at the bare minimum, you should know the fretboard. But if you really want to take your guitar playing to new heights when it comes to improvising and composing, then internalizing the fretboard is what you really want to do. And in fact, it doesn't take that long to do. So in this video, I'll be teaching you how you can do both, along with exercises to help you finally master the notes of the fretboard. So let's start with the basics of what we need to know and then towards the end of the video I'll be giving you a bunch of great exercises to help you internalize the fretboard. So let's start with the musical alphabet. And if you already know the musical alphabet, feel free to skip this part and head to the exercises. So the musical alphabet consists of 12 notes. We have A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G and G sharp. But what happens after G sharp? Well, we actually just go back to the start to another A. This next A though is an octave higher than the first A and our alphabet just keeps looping again and again. Now we can actually write our musical alphabet in another way using flats as shown below. Now what's the difference between a sharp and a flat? Well, a sharp is when we ascend up in pitch. So an A note then up to an A sharp. A flat is when we descend down in pitch, so a B down to a B flat. Whether you choose it to call it A sharp or B flat is completely up to you. And in other words, our musical alphabet looks like this. You'll notice that there's no sharps or flats in between B and C and E and F. And that's a rule that you'll just need to remember moving forward. And that's why in The Simpsons, they called themselves the B sharps. It's because the note doesn't exist. So it's quite a clever joke. Now be sure to really memorize this. There's nothing in between B and C and E and F. So now you know the musical alphabet, let's apply it to the fretboard. To apply it to the fretboard, what we need is a good reference point from which to use our alphabet. And so you should memorize what the notes of the open strings are on a standard tuned guitar. And generally everyone already knows that because we have to tune our guitar, don't we? So we have E, A, D, G, B, and E. An easy sentence for remembering that is eat all day, get big, easy. The other thing you should know is that those same notes repeat up at the 12th fret of your guitar. And that's why the 12th fret marker generally has two dots or a special inlay. So now armed with that knowledge of two reference points, you should be able to figure out any note on the guitar by either going up or down the musical alphabet. So let's take a couple of examples. So the third fret of the A string, what is that note? So we can start from A, then A sharp, B, do we go to B sharp? No, remember in between B and C there's nothing. So we go from B to a C. So the third fret of the A string is a C note. What about the ninth fret of our B string? What's that? Well, we could work our way up the musical alphabet starting from the open B string. But since we know that there's a B up here at the 12th fret, it'd be easier to work our way down the musical alphabet. So B, B flat, A, A flat. So ninth fret of the B string is an A flat or a G sharp. Next, I'm gonna show you some awesome note shortcuts so you can easily figure out where the same note is an octave higher on different locations of the fretboard. And all these shortcuts can also be reversed too. So if you wanna find the note in a lower octave, just use the shortcut backwards. 
So the first octave shape shortcut applies to the sixth and fifth strings. And the shortcut is two frets up the neck and two strings down. So let's take a look at two examples of this. So let's take the A note on our sixth string. Our octave shape is two frets up the neck and two strings down. So if that's an A, then that's an A, an octave higher. Let's try the same thing on the fifth string. So let's take this C note, for example. Now our shape goes two frets up the neck, two strings down. So that's a C and that's a C. The next octave shape shortcut applies to our fourth and third strings. And the shortcut is three frets up the neck and two strings down. Let's take a look at two examples. This is a G note on the fourth string. Now to find the octave, we go three frets up and then two strings down. So that's a G and that's a G. Now let's try the same thing on our third string. So let's take this note for example, which is an A. We go three frets up, two strings down. So A and A. Now the third octave shape shortcut applies to our fifth and fourth strings. And the shortcut is two frets down the neck towards the headstock and three strings down. So let's take a look at that C note that we had earlier. Now for this shortcut, we go two frets down towards the headstock and three strings down. So that's a C and that's a C. Let's try the same thing on our fourth string. So we had a G here before. Now we go two frets and down the neck towards the headstock. So one, two, and three strings down. So that's a G and that's a G. And finally, the last octave shape shortcut applies to our sixth string. And this one is a little different because the shortcut actually takes us to the same note, but two octaves higher. This shortcut is simply the same fret, but using the high E string instead of the low E string. So if this is an A note on the fifth fret of the low E, this is an A note on the high E, but two octaves higher. So those are some super handy octave shortcuts and I have a great exercise for practicing those later in this video. So now let's talk about internalizing the fretboard and this is something I highly recommend every guitarist do. It's something I didn't do until later in my own guitar journey, but boy, I wish I did it earlier. It is probably one of the things I really wish I had focused on when I first started playing. Now, if you practice these exercises for five to 10 minutes daily, I'm confident that within a few weeks, you will have internalized the fretboard. Now, the first exercise is to internalize the single strings individually by themselves. So let's start with the low E. Now, the best thing to do is actually ignore our sharps and flats and just focus on our natural notes. So A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Once you've memorized where a G is, then it's super easy to find a G sharp as that's just one fret higher. So it's more economical to just focus on the main notes for the time being. With this exercise, I want you to simply spell out the musical alphabet up the fretboard as you move up and play the notes. I want you to verbally say the note out loud as well as you play it. Now remember, since we're using only our natural notes, every jump up to the next natural note is a two fret step, except for B to C and E to F, which are just one fret steps. So starting with open E, What's after that? Remember, between E and F and B and C, there's only a one fret step, so we just go to F. Now from F to G, that's a two fret step. So G, then A, then B, and then from B to C, remember, there's just a one fret step. So C, D, and then we end on E. Now one little tip is that when you get to the 12th fret, if you're not on the same note as the open string, then something went wrong. Because remember our 12th fret note is exactly the same as our open string note, just one octave higher. So it should be E and it should end on an E here on the 12th fret. Now after you've gone up and down the string a few times, then pick random notes and play them with no specific order. So for example, you just pick a random note in your own head, B, all right. That's a B, so you'll play it. And then you'll go, all right, now let's play an F. Go to F. Let's play a D. Let's play a G. So on and so forth. 
So you're just sort of testing yourself with your knowledge of the string, the single string. Now, one little tip if you wanna know if you're getting the right note is to use a clip-on tuner on your guitar. And then when you pick a note, let's say B, play the note and then see, did you get it right? Because the clip-on tuner should be able to tell you. And then F, all right, it's F, so I was right. So you could do that, or alternatively, you could have a cheat sheet in front of you with all the notes on the fretboard printed on a diagram. And I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Now focus on one string at a time for a couple of days until you're fully confident with it, and then move on to the next string. Now you'll only have to learn five strings effectively because the high E string is the same as the low E string. Our next exercise now focuses on finding one note on every string working vertically. So pick any note from the musical alphabet, and then you'll need a metronome to help you push your thinking and test yourself. It's super important to use a metronome here. So let's pick the A note, for example. Now on every click or in between each click, you'll need to find that note and play it on each string starting from the low E string. So for example, we have an A here on the fifth fret of the low E string. Now for the A string, we have an open string, but we're going to ignore open notes here. So for the fifth string, we'll play the A on the 12th fret. Again, each time you hit a note, say the name as this will help internalize it. We're going to go all the way to the high E string and then we're gonna go all the way back up to the low E. Now, if you're struggling to keep up with the metronome, then slow it down even further, but 40 beats per minute should be the aim at the start. So as an example, this is what it'll look like. A, 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 A. Now do that with all the other notes in the musical alphabet as well. And again, you can just pick any random note. You don't have to do it in order A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You can just pick, all right, I'm going to do it with an F now. F, 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 F. The next exercise will essentially be the same, but we'll be playing a three note phrase up our alphabet, starting with that target note. So let's take A as our example. Our phrase will then be A, B, C. Now this is great because you'll slowly start to see how you can play a simple three note lick in multiple positions. A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. The next exercise ramps things up even more and will really test you. So here we're gonna choose two random notes and you can use this free tool to auto-generate notes for you. Just make sure you select two notes and only select natural notes. So that just means no sharps and no flats. We're now gonna play these two notes on each string starting from our low E and then move vertically once we've finished on a string. So let's try that. So we've got E and A here. E, A, E, A, E, A, E, A, E, A, E, A. And of course, once you get to the bottom, just work your way back up again. Now next, we're going to move down the strings, but alternating between the notes. So instead of playing both of the notes on the one string, we'll play the first note on the low E and then the second note on the next string and then repeat that process until we get to the high E and then we'll work our way back up. E, A, E, A, E, A, E, A, E, A. e. Now the next two exercises will be the same thing as our previous two, but we'll use three random notes here instead of two. So we have E, G, D here. So let's give that a shot. 
A J D A J D A J D A J D A J D A J D And when you get down the bottom, work your way back up. And for the second exercise using three notes, E, G, D, E, G, D, E, G, D, E, G, D. Now, once you've mastered these exercises that I've taught you for natural notes, Test yourself by introducing sharps and flats as well. And as you get better, start increasing your metronome speed. The final exercise is about internalizing the octave shape shortcuts I taught you earlier. So all you have to do is pick any note anywhere on the fretboard. Ideally start somewhere central. Then you're going to jump up the fretboard using the octave shape patterns. So let's use this note as an example. That's C sharp. So let's use shortcut one to get to our next C sharp. So two frets up, two strings down. So that's a C sharp. Our next shortcut is shortcut two. So C sharp, and that's a C sharp. Now if you're moving up and you peak up at the high E string, use shortcut number four to jump back down to the low E on the same fret and then continue on. So C sharp there, C sharp there, and then we'll continue on. So back to shortcut one, where we go two frets up, two strings down. So that's a C sharp. Then we'll go three frets up, two strings down. So that's a C sharp as well. And if you're moving up the fretboard and you peak up at the B string, use the octave shortcut number three to jump back to the A string. So this is a reverse of that shortcut. So remember that shortcut three was two frets towards the neck and three strings down. So that's a C sharp but in reverse, it will be three strings up and two frets up towards the bridge. So that's C sharp as well. So once you get as high as you can, then reverse the direction. So C sharp, C sharp, C sharp, C sharp. Now, if you're moving down and you peak at the low E string, use shortcut four to jump back to the high E string. So that's a C sharp and then C sharp, C sharp. And if you're moving down the neck and you peak at the fifth string, use shortcut number three to take you back to the second string. So C sharp, two frets towards the neck, three strings down, and that's C sharp. Now with this exercise, make sure that you're saying the name of the note as you play each note. And again, you'll be using a metronome to keep yourself accountable. So let's try this exercise. C sharp, C sharp, C sharp. C sharp, 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 C sharp. Now putting in the work with these exercises is super critical. You want to internalize it so that everything becomes second nature. So you shouldn't stop playing these exercises until you've fully internalized everything and can just jump between notes with ease and at a high speed of the metronome. Even once you've mastered and internalized this, I'd highly encourage you to just make this part of your weekly brush up exercise. Just every few weeks, just doing these exercises to make sure you don't lose it. It really is such an underrated skill to have and I would recommend every guitarist have it. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how to master your fretboard. Now, if you wanna learn other things like theory, how chords are built, that sort of thing, then be sure to check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. And it has lessons like this in it that will help you really understand the guitar as opposed to just play a couple of chords. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.